നമസ്കാരം ഞാൻ എലിക്കുട്ടി എലിക്കുട്ടി അല്ല എലിക്കുട്ടിയാണ് അതെ ഐ ഡു നോ വട്ട് ഇറ്റ് മീൻസ് and i'll tell you all about how i got this nickname and a bunch of other things about me in this q and a video swagadam first of all thank you so much for subscribing and following and supporting me over the last two years on instagram and one year on youtube whether you just started following me yesterday or from day one i really appreciate you being here othri santosham unda and i hope that for those of you studying malayalam i've helped you now In this video we'll talk about three main topics. First, about me, personal questions, things I like about Kerala, and all the uh, exciting tidbits that maybe you haven't read about yet through the news articles or other videos that I've done. The next part will be about studying Malayalam, some tips, some resources, and general language learning advice. Then the last part will be about how you can help me improve the future of equity and why I don't do English tuitions so let's get started so why mayalo the easy answer is this guy but <laughs> there's actually a lot more to it i am a big lover of languages i started learning spanish when i was in high school in the united states spanish is the second most spoken language after english due to the population of many spanish speaking people in the US so in school i would study it and speak it with my friends my colleagues my coworkers and it was a really enjoyable language for me then when i got my first job in korea i decided to learn korean as well i would practice with taxi drivers i would learn from my korean friends i could read and write and uh, unfortunately i've forgotten so much of it but it would really be great to get back in touch with korean also i've been into japanese when i was a kid i was really into anime and manga and then i started learning more about japanese culture and even visited there a couple times while i was staying in korea i was living with a japanese family as they're living english teachers so we did language exchanges and that was really wonderful so Coming to UAE, Arjun wasn't even the first Malayali that I met. In fact, my friend from Chennai is married to a Malayali and we are all very close and they were the ones that first introduced me to South Indian culture. Before coming to the UAE, all I knew about India was Bollywood and butter chicken in the Taj Mahal, which unfortunately is what most Americans know about India. But thankfully I was able to be exposed to much more. And then when Arjun came along, the interest for the language came along too. So that's how I got into Malayalam. So, how did I get the name Elikutti? Well, my full name is Elizabeth, and my friends call me Eliza. And remember that Tamil friend I told you about? Well, she decided to start calling me Eli. <laughs> When I found out what Ellie meant, I was like, "Archana, how can you call me such a name?" She goes, "No, no, 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 no. If you had cut it to the end of something, it makes it cute." So, uru tamasha ane. Then uh, when I started my Instagram account, I thought I need a handle. What kind of title should I give my page? Then I thought, "Ellie Kutti." All right. So, everyone wants to know, "How did you meet your husband? Where did you meet him? Why do you like a Malayali guy?" Okay, okay. So, Arjun and I met on a dating app. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. I know you're going to ask. The dating app is called Inner Circle. You have to apply to be put on it. I don't know if it's available in every region of the world, but uh, go for it. I met him there, and before we had a chance to meet face to face, I took a big vacation to Australia and New Zealand for two months. So we texted for over nine weeks, just talking to each other, sending voice notes and pictures and. Finally, after a 24-hour flight back to Dubai, he picked me up from the airport. And I figured, wow, if you like me now, <laughs> it'll be easy from here. So yeah, that's how we met. And one year later, we got married in Kerala, and uh now we're making some big shifts in our life. Where is he now? Well, he's in Vietnam and he's becoming a teacher, and I'm really proud of him for this big change in his life. And I'll be joining him in July once I finish my work here. Oh, what do I do? I'm an English teacher. I'm a high school English teacher with a government school in the UAE. I've been here for five years, and I met Arjun oh two and a half, <gasps> three years ago. Oh wow, it's been three years already. Wow, <laughs> so many adventures since then. So yeah, that's our story. More about me personally. 
I love traveling. I've been to 23 different countries. I'm very fortunate to have a US passport that allows me to travel very easily. Uh, also, I love cats. I have two sons of my own, uh, Parishi and Thorin. And uh, I love animals in general. Anytime I travel or anytime I go out, I try to see animals in the wild. I try to uh, learn about them and their, their ways. I'm just really fascinated by animals. Also, I'm into writing. I used to do a lot of travel blogging before Elikurti and I really need to get back into that. I also write poetry and short stories. Uh, I play ukulele, I'm self-taught. What else? I'm afraid of cockroaches and the dark. <laughs> And, oh, that's, you know, I, oh, my family's in the United States. I have two brothers, one older, one younger, no sisters, sorry. And uh, they are all in the US. I'm the first person in my family to live abroad. So I'm a bit weird in that aspect. Well, for more than one reason, but that's one. All right, so this section is about the, what is your favorite? Mm. So, what is your favorite Kerala food? Mm, I really like mango fish curry. It's tart, it's savory, it's spicy, and it's amazing. Um, I also love sweets like payasa. Um, and I am able to cook some Kerala food. For example, um, I'm able to make thoren, I'm able to make uh, chicken curry, I can make payasa, even though one time I kind of exploded the payasa all over the kitchen, but it still tasted good. Uh, I like to try all different kinds of things. My husband is excellent at making beef roast and pork roast. Those are his two very famous dishes that he makes. Um, what else? My favorite Malayalam movies. So if we look at new generation, I really like Ima Yao and Kumbulangi Nights. They're both very uh, impactful movies that are engaging and have a lot of social messages behind them. For classic movies, I like uh, Oru Vadaka and Viragada. It was my first Mamuti movie that I had seen. And also uh, Vana Presta uh, by Mohan with Mohan La. It's an excellent, excellent movie. If you ask me which one, Mamuti or Mohan La, I'm an Ika fan. <laughs> also, my favorite new generation actors are Fahad Fasal and Parvati. And uh, what else? Mm, I do listen to Malayalam music. I cannot sing in Malayalam. Um, uh, other than cinema songs, I like to listen to Bike Gurum Bridge, uh, When Chai Met Toast. Uh, I try to listen to a lot of contemporary Malayalam music. It's starting, it's a very small community, but it's starting to grow and I think that's wonderful. Um, what else? My favorite place in Kerala? Mm, difficult question. I have visited most places in Kerala. I still need to see Vayanad, Palakkad, and uh, Malapuram. Um, but my favorite place would probably be the Malabar Coast. I really enjoyed my time in Kalika as well as Kannur and Talisheri. The food, the people are very gentle and kind and it's just, it's very different from the rest of Kerala. And the rest of Kerala is amazing, but there's just something in the spirit of Malabar that really stuck with me. And I actually, Arjun hasn't been there yet, so I need to take him there. Um, yeah. And what else? Um, just the things that I love about Kerala is it's so laid back and more easygoing. In Dubai, uh, it's very hectic. Things are really fast. People are always too busy for this or going here, going there. But in Kerala, it's definitely a slower pace, which can be more enjoyable. And of course, the nature. You know, you go on the houseboats, you go into the hill stations, you go by the sea. There's just always so much still untouched nature. I just hope that people make more of an effort to keep it clean because that's definitely a big topic. Um, not just in Kerala, but in all of India is, is hygiene and cleanliness and taking care of, of our home. All right, so that's enough about the boring things about me. Let's talk about learning Malayalam. Come to my workstation. Welcome to my workstation. Let me share with you my Malayalam learning journey and some of the resources that I recommend for those learning Malayalam. First of all, when I started learning Malayalam, I was using italki.com, which is kind of like Airbnb. You find what you want, you find the price, you get to know your tutor, and then you have an online lesson. So I got to meet Mr. Yasser, and he was teaching me the alphabet and basic grammar. Unfortunately, in the UAE, we've now banned most of the OIP services. So I started to do some research on my own. The first thing that I came across in my research was this text by Dr. Ravi Shankar and it's called A Grammar of Malayalam. You can find this online and all the PDFs that I'm going to discuss in books, I'll put links in my description so you can find them later. 
So this grammar of Malayalam is for people who are really into linguistics or maybe trained as language teachers because it uses a lot of linguistic terminology. Thankfully, because my background is in learning language and teaching languages, I was able to follow it, but it wasn't very practical for day-to-day -day practice, only for clarifying specific doubts. So when I contacted Dr. Nair through his email, uh, he had told me about a book that he had worked on called Malayalam Tutor. This is very much a elementary guide to Malayalam, and it has 18 very easy to follow lessons uh, based on topic and function. It's very easy to follow. The only thing is you really need to learn how to read Libby before you can use it. You can learn to read Malayalam. I believe in you. If I can do it, you can definitely do it. So you have this and it's, it's very helpful. Now, there are other publications out there. Uh, one of them that I found was by Dr. Moag. He's an American professor and he created a conversational Malayalam textbook. Um, it's from the 1960s, but it's still very useful. Everything is written in Manglish and uh, it has repetition drills and conversation practice and it's, it's quite interesting. I think it's useful. And again, I'll post the links for this in the description. And Dr. Moab also has a, um, another Malayalam textbook uh, that is more for like a university course as opposed to a casual spoken course. So he has both kinds of books. For reading practice, also I have children's books. It's easier because of the language choice um, and it has some pictures and it's fun because they're children's stories. So the style of Malayalam will be very easy to read and um, it'll be fun and cute. And you know, when you learn a language, you are kind of like a child again because you're starting from the beginning. Also, it's important to have a few dictionaries on hand. I recommend this one from DC Books. Uh, I picked this up while I was in Kerala. Uh, this is the English English Malayalam. Uh, it has quite good definitions. In addition to that, I was gifted some books from Dr. Nair. Uh, the first of which is also another dictionary. This one is a Malayalam to English dictionary. And in addition to that, we have some books of vocabulary words that are related by theme. For example, plants, animals, direction. Also some courses in Malayalam. Uh, again, these are older books, but still very useful. And all of these you can find on the website of the Central Institute for Indian Languages. So these you can order at least while you're in India. If you're outside of India and trying to order, um, I can do some investigation. You can get in touch with me about that. Also, I recently came to know about Dr. Ofira, and she has published so many interesting articles on Malayalam, but she has also published a book this year called A Study on Malayalam in Its Own Terms. I'll be receiving that book hopefully in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited because it uses literature and other explanations of Malayalam texts to help teach Malayalam. And Dr. Ofira um, has the perspective of a foreigner teaching Malayalam, so that helps for people like me who haven't been exposed to the language so easily. So. These are some of the resources that I think are very useful. Now, learning languages in general requires a lot of practice. Speaking practice, um, listening practice, there are a lot of activities to do. And with a language like Malayalam, it can be difficult to read it and then to hear it because there's so many dialects, there's so many shortcuts, there's so many contractions. For example, what are you doing? In the Tegiyane. My husband will say, India. <laughs> It's like, what is that? So, yes, watching movies and listening to songs will help you get your ear in tune to Malayalam, but it's not the only way to learn. So you can use that to help you, but it can also be overwhelming if you're not familiar with the dialect of the district, because maybe you don't know that he's saying it this way because he's from Trishur, and he's saying it this way because he's from Trivandrum, okay? So be careful as you use uh, Malayalam media, it's helpful, but use some guidance as well. Have someone there, have your designated Malayali friend help you with that. Um, but just keep listening, keep trying. Look for a certain word and listen for that word. Look for a certain phrase and listen for that phrase. And it'll slowly start coming to you. Trust me, I've been studying for two and a half years and people say, how are you so fluent? But actually I'm still very much beginning. <laughs> I can have some basic conversations, but actually if I'm listening to someone, I won't always catch everything. So please don't compare yourself to other people as well. This is 
not helpful for learning a language. Take your time, enjoy the process, make tons of mistakes, and make Mayali friends. So, I think that's all for that. Now let's get a little bit more comfortable and I'll talk to you a bit more about the future of Elikurti and why I don't do English tuitions. Alright, so it's been two years. Where do we go from here? Well, first of all, I'm so happy that on Instagram I have nearly 30k followers and on YouTube I now have over 20k subscribers. I hope to continue growing and spreading the word. For YouTube, I plan to create more long videos. A lot of you have been asking for me to return to that format. I do plan on it. I can produce the short videos very consistently. The longer videos do take more work, but I will make an effort to make videos for things like common verbs in Malayalam, or common adjectives in Malayalam, or phrases to say hello, phrases to say goodbye, and other thematic units. So that is definitely on my list. Once we start traveling again, you bet there's going to be more travel vlogs. As we shift to Vietnam, I'll be documenting that as well, and we'll have more together content in the future. I'm really looking forward to. Outside of social media, I want to create PDFs. I want to start working toward having a book or books or resources. That's been a goal of mine since the beginning. Um, I'm working with people to help digitize my work and with your help, maybe I can find a way to get a book deal, whether it's digitally or physical books. I want to help Malayalis all around the world who are trying to get back in touch with their language. Hello, Parsi. I want to help not only Malayalis, but also those who are in relationships with Malayalis or people who are trying to get back to their mother tongue. What do you want to do? What do you want to do? Now, to focus on that further, because I'm putting so much effort into making videos, making resources, making things to help, I'm not going to be spending my time doing English tuitions. I get a lot of requests for that and I understand there's a lot of pressure to take IELTS. There's a lot of pressure to have English on your resume. There's a lot of pressure in order to immigrate, have a good job, be seen as successful, that you need to improve your English. Thankfully, there are many channels and resources that already exist for teaching English. And some of them are even by Malayalis. Please don't think that only native speakers can teach English. There are very excellent non-native speakers of English that are just as qualified and just as capable of teaching. So because on Instagram you have hashtag learn English one million posts and hashtag learn Malayalam less than 500 posts, there needs to be some kind of, there needs to be attention for Malayalam because if we want the language to be able to be taught to future generations as we become more globalized, there has to be resources and my heart is in making these resources. So I hope you understand and support me. Not only am I going to work on producing my own content, I will share and support other accounts doing the same thing. On Instagram, we have Malayalam flashcards up and coming. On YouTube, we have Fluent in Malayalam. There are just so many people also getting on board with helping teach Malayalam and we should continue to nourish and support these people. Well, I think that's all I got for you for today. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for your questions. I really appreciate you once again supporting me and following me and enjoying my videos. So, apoelam para na tapole, tine, karnam.